Hello and welcome back to season four of the Lincoln Loco 2. Today we have got the first game of the season for you. The first game that I'm showing you on camera. We've actually played two games already this season. But we're playing against Witten Albion today in the league. We just about survived last season. Uh, last episode we confirmed our survival with a game to go. or pretty much It was pretty much a game to go. The final game of the season turned out we were safe whatever happened, so that was absolutely fine. I've been busy all summer trying to sign players, trying to get better players in to try and give us a better chance this season of ugh, not just survival, but trying to push on towards the playoffs. And I think I've done that to an extent. All the targets that I had haven't come in, as you would expect. Uh, a lot of players that we wanted to sign just weren't wanting to come to the club at all. But we seem to have got in a fair few decent players, so we're going to go through the transfers, talk about the team, talk about the tactics, and then get into today's game against Witten Albion. So I suppose what we do is we start off with the transfers, and there's quite a few of them to go through. So we'll uh, we'll try and get through it as quick as possible. Let's look quick look at the release players, though, from last season. Uh, a, a few names that we recognise there. Reagan Hutchinson, Michael Jacklin, who has retired, actually, from football now. He's not a player anymore. I think you can get him as a coach, maybe, but he's, he, he doesn't want to come here as a coach, and he's not particularly good. Uh, Mum left, and uh, Chris Kelly left, Jack Warner left, Aitken left, Robinson left, and Shea Heron, who's their youth player, left as well. So a few players leaving who had been big personalities in the team but just didn't cut it last season weren't going to be good enough so they've gone on to the ins then and there's a few names that you will recognize here uh, we'll get through as quickly because there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve new signings to talk about and potentially a few more on the cards as well Number one then, Duncan Idahoe comes in. He was with us in our second season with Lincoln United in our promotion season from the division below. Played last season in the same division as us with Stalybridge Celtic who went into the playoffs actually. So he's had a pretty good time there. Only two and a half star current ability at the moment. I think he... I think he could be a little bit better than that. And he's on a lot of money per week, actually, for two and a half star current ability. So he's a player that we may look to maybe get rid of at some point if he's just not playing and things like that because he's on a lot of money. But had a fairly decent season last year at Staley Bridge. And hopefully, so far this season, he started well. If he continues that kind of form, I'll be happy. We know all about him, so we won't talk about him too much. But next up was Joe Howell from Gray's Athletic. He's one of the star players that we brought in this season. A central midfielder, an advanced playmaker, or Mazala, or a central midfielder in those kind of positions of that role and duty. That's really good to see. He is, I think, the best player in the squad at the moment. Currently actually injured out for another three weeks with a twisted ankle. He did that on the first day of the season, which is a bit unfortunate. So you won't see him play today. But he is going to be a really key player for us. Again, on a lot of money, on £375 per week. We are paying some players quite a bit of money. But I like him what I see in Joe Howe. Has played for Grey's Athletic, over 100 games for Grey's Athletic in the equivalent division to us, but a slightly different region. And he played pretty well. Five goals and ten assists last season is really good. So hopefully he'll be a top player. Next up is Javon Splatt, who is going to be our new striker this season. The poacher comes in as a four-star current ability player from Derby County, where he'd not played a game, actually. Uh, started at Dulwich Hamlet, then went to, to, to Derby for a little while in their youth team. But they let him go, and I've clicked off him by accident. But here he is. 15 finishing is absolutely beautiful. And some oh, pace of 11 isn't too bad, to be fair. It's, it's better than... Some other players I've got to say out there. But he's got some decent attributes on him. So I think he could be a good player for us. Uh, hasn't scored yet this season in the two league games we've played. But it doesn't matter because he's... He's a, he's, he'll, he'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Next up, we apparently paid a fee for Reece Delan. I'm pretty sure he got him on a free transfer. I thought his contract had ended, but... I'm not quite sure how we've ended up paying 5.75k for him. But Reese Deland comes in from Whitby Town as a left back. Scout said he was a bit better than he actually is, but he's two and a half star current ability. But he's got some good physical attributes on him as well. His crossing of four is kind of worrying. We need a new left back, definitely. And the initial targets didn't want to come to us. So Reese Deland was sort of like the next a best one to come to us. Um, and I'm, I think I don't think we've got value for money with Reese Deland. I feel, feel like it is a poor financial decision from us but at the time no the left backs are available so we've got him for now but we may try and get rid of him soon if he doesn't start playing well another name you'll recognize Stephen Narty is back for another season this time though he is a Lincoln United player Lincoln City let him go last season he comes in as uh, our starting center back this season so he played for us last year and it was it was good for the most part, I've got to say. He did more good than bad, I've got to say. So looking forward to seeing Stephen Narty coming in. Uh, Bradley Foster Feniger is coming in as a goalkeeper, but not our starting goalkeeper this season. He looks decent, though, at 20 years old. Um, got some really impressive aerial reach and handling and reflexes for this level, which is what stood out to me, which is why I signed him. But 
I think we've got a better uh, better goalkeeper that's come in. And of course, we've still got Michael Emmerich kicking around the squad as well, who I think is going to be pushing these two for the starting position. Again, another Derby County youth player that hasn't played for them. So hopefully him and Javan will know each other and bed down in the team quite well. We brought in a player from loan from Lincoln City. Jacob Bredis comes in as a right back. And again, scouts thought he was a little bit better than he actually is at right back. But as things currently stand, he is the best right back at the club. So the 17-year-old comes in. Don't think he played... Uh, anywhere else on loan. Played one game for Lincoln in League One last season, actually. So he's got a Football League pedigree in him, technically speaking. But he should be okay, I think. We'll carry on looking for more left-backs and right-backs, I think, because I think we are lacking a little bit there still. But they're the ones coming in to start this season at the moment, at least. Adam Hughes, the next person coming up, is a CDM. We needed a CDM because we're going to play with a CDM this season. Now, he wasn't the first choice. Other players that we wanted just haven't become available or didn't want to come to us. So he comes in on a free transfer. He's a ball winning midfielder in that position, but we'll play him as a defensive midfielder, I think, because we do have Lee Masters who can play as a ball winning midfielder in the midfield, which I quite like to see. But again, he looks like a fairly decent player. Got some good physicals and some good mentals where they matter. His, his technicals let him down, maybe ever so slightly, but good free kick on him, though. Maybe we'll see him score a few worldies. I don't know. Joe Calderwood is the goalkeeper that's going to be starting this season for us. I think he is the best goalkeeper that we have got. His handling isn't quite as good as the old guy or the guy we had, um, we mentioned before, Thesadro, whatever he's called. Reflexes and aerial reach of 14, though, are very, very good. And I think from what I've seen in pre-season and things like that, he's, he's a better player, I've got to say. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he does this season. He came in from Stokes Youth System, actually. So again, he's got some good pedigree behind him in terms of how he's been coaching things like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays. Hopefully, he'll keep quite a few clean sheets for us. Harry Higginson comes in as well. He's a centre-back, so another centre-back coming in. Three centre-backs, we needed them. He comes in from Cambridge, is it? Or someone else came in from Cambridge. No, Kidderminster, Harry Higginson comes in. Played uh, in the Vanarama National League for them. So two leagues above us last season. Didn't play particularly well. In fact, has never played particularly well. But in his one appearance so far, I got a 7.1 rating this season. So that's quite good for us at the moment. Hopefully, he'll be a decent centre-back for us. I'm looking forward to it. Kyle Porter comes in from Coventry. He is a central midfielder. We need just someone else in there to just sort of cement, give us a bit more depth in centre midfield. He comes in on loan from Coventry as a three-star current ability player, playing as a central midfielder. Again, his all-round game is pretty decent for this kind of level. I'm expecting him to do some good stuff. It's been all over the place. Most recently, Nuneaton Borough in the league above us where he played half the season relatively well, kind of. So hopefully, he'll be a good backup player for us this season. And finally, this is the guy in from Cambridge. Joshua Gray comes in on loan. He is another centre-back, three-star current ability. Again, he should be a pretty decent player, I think. Uh, has played for Cray Wanderers last season in the equivalent league, a different, you know, different league but equivalent to our level, and played relatively well for Cray Wanderers. So... I think we've got the makings of a decent side. I do want to bring in another striker. We had a few targets who just didn't want to come to us in the end for some reason or other. Uh, a lot of them asking for a lot of money. But 12 new signings, a lot to remember. I know that for sure. The, the, the ones that we need to look out for, particularly this season though, Javan Splat, Joe Howell, I would probably say, actually, Stephen Nart is going to be big for us. And maybe, actually, Adam Hughes may be quite good as well. And so the Joe, Joe Calderwood. The other ones maybe a bit more fringe player-esque or not going to be standing out too much. Either way, these are the guys that we brought in. Hopefully, this is going to be enough for us. So, uh, we've played two games already, as I said. The first game of the season was against Radcliffe in what was a boring 0-0 game. Which was okay, because Radcliffe actually think are one of the favourites promotion this season. They got promoted from a league below us last season and they are, they are favourites actually for promotion or one of the favourites for promotion this season so that's quite good for them and then the last game we played was against Kidsgrove a 3-2 win there which is pretty good Luke Holmes with a penalty in the 72nd minute to make sure we won it so that was a pretty good game from what I've seen so far I think that the guys are playing relatively well pre-season was a bit mixed as you can see here we beat Lincoln City but then we lose to Kingsling Town so it's a little bit an odd one not quite sure we just tried different things I suppose over pre-season different combinations of players but I think the players that we've selected should be good enough to get us in and around the playoffs I think if we look at the league table as it currently stands after those first two games of a season we sit eighth in the league on four points which is quite nice to see a few old names a few new names and a few familiar names as well Offset United I think were promoted last season from the league below us and they're looking like they're the real deal so far this season at the other end of the scale though Morpeth Town also promoted not doing particularly well so far with zero points but then again a lot of teams here looking very familiar from last season as well if we look at the season preview, currently I think we're predicted for 12th, so bang on mid-table pretty much. So I think with a good run of form, we could push ourselves into that sort of top 8, 7, 6 sort of thing to try and push ourselves 
into the Football League. All right, Tom, let's not get too uh, carried away. It's not the Football League yet. It's the National League that we'll get promoted to if we win this division. We'll get promoted in this division. But I have just noticed Boston United goalkeeper is Grant Smith, who actually is the current Lincoln City goalkeeper. What he's doing at Boston, I don't know, because he's actually sick. I say that. He's, he's, he's actually quite good. He is very good, to be fair. Football manager clearly haven't done him justice, I've got to say. But... I don't know why I dropped down to Boston, to be fair. That's, that is ridiculous. But fair play. You know, fair play, Grant Smith. Why, he only played 16 games last season as well. Why? Why only 16? Was he, he must have been injured because he is way too good for this level. That's the kind of thing. Boston can bring in some absolutely sick players. So that's, that's worrying for us. No wonder they are favourites top of the table, as you can see here. Radcliffe up the third. So that's actually quite good for us that we got a 0-0 draw. So they're looking like they could be quite good. Either way, we're not here to talk about other teams, though. We're here to talk about us. And for this first game of the season, if I can find the team sheet. Blimey, where is the team sheet? Here we go. This is the formation we're going to be playing this season. We're moving away from the attack midfielder. We're bringing in the central defensive midfielder. Just because I think we need it. I think we need it in this division. We're, you know, we've got some better players this season, but we're still not going to be that free-flowing attacking side. We're just not good enough yet. So we have to be a bit more cautious and a bit more defensive coming into this game. So, Calderwood, as I said, the new goalkeeper starting at the back with our new wing-backs, Dolan and Bredis, coming in there. Nati, who started last season, staying at centre-back, but then the new chap, Gray, coming in at centre-back there. So he should be quite good. John Gray, Josh Gray, rather, coming in on loan from Cambridge. He should be decent. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do this season. Adam Hughes, the new guy coming in into that CDM position, playing as a defensive midfielder. Lee Masters retaining his position from last season as a ball-winning midfielder, coming up alongside Porter, who is not usually going to be starting there. It's only because the new guy, Joe Howell, has been injured, as I said, for three weeks or so. So he will be coming back into the squad as soon as he's back fit again at the moment. Porter coming in as just a centre midfielder on attack. Luke Holmes on the left and Bird on the right, so that's pretty unchanged from last season. We did want to get a new left winger in, but we just couldn't find one who wanted to join the club for a reasonable wage, who was actually a significant upgrade on Luke Holmes. So Luke, well, although, to be fair, Luke Holmes has scored two goals this season, so that's all right. And the new guy, Javan Splat, starting up front. Connor Robinson did stay at the club, but isn't going to be starting today's game. He's on the bench, as you can see down here, alongside Matt Cotton. So... I think this is going to be a pretty interesting lineup. This is going to be a good game, I think, against Witten Albion. And hopefully, these new boys will show you what they're made of and will grab a win today. Also, I just want to note as well, uh, I'm recording this on Saturday night, all right? Early today, Lincoln United played in real life and they had a new signing playing for them on the left wing called Tim Akinola. Coincidence? I think not. Oh, two minutes into the game, they've had a man sent off straight away. Was it no? Yeah, them. I I thought it was us for a moment, but two minutes into this game, Witten Albion having a man sent off. Hughes nearly puts it in the back of the net. We saw he had thirteen free kicks earlier on. Hopefully, he'll really like make use of that this season. We had McQuaid last season, who's still at the club actually, but on the bench today. He was like our free kick specialist last season, but he was our free kick specialist of hitting the post from free kicks. It was ridiculous how many times he did it. So we've been given a bit of an early advantage then with uh, not ascending off from, for uh, Witten Albion and an injury as well for one of their key players, probably, I assume, if you're starting the game. So we have to take this game to them now. This could be a really big three points if we win this game because Witten Albion are a decent side. Although saying that, literally nothing has happened so far in today's game apart from the red card, uh, which is fine by me at the moment. We're just sort of bedding ourselves into it. We're, we're growing in the game. There's no need to rush trying to score a goal because if we just get one at the end of the game, that's fine. You know, try and, try and make their players tired in the first half. That's that's what they're doing. Must be. Not because we're rubbish and not creating opportunities for ourselves. It's because we're just trying to tie them out. That's that's the thinking, I hope. Maybe. I hope it is at least because I, I wanted to score some goals. All right. Well, half time has uh, come around pretty quickly there. Um Come on, keep going. They're a man down. Let's get a result here. And only Jacob Bredis looks motivated by that, which is a little bit worrying, I've got to say. We'll start the second half either way. Hopefully, we'll grab a goal. If not, we may have to bring Conor Robinson on. We may have to bring Matt Cotton on just because they know how to do it. They did, they've done it for three seasons, the two of them. Although Hughes oh, puts it in. A beautiful free kick headed by Gray. And it hits, I think it hit the post of the, or, or the, or the, uh, the crossbar and eventually gets clear. They try and get an counter-attack with an Albion, but it's quickly quashed. We've done very well to restrict them to one shot. I'm liking that. Our defence is doing quite well. This is what we did in our promotion season two seasons ago from the league below. Like We really restricted squads and teams very, very well. Unfortunately, it looks like we can't score goals, though, as we've had eight shots and three on target. None of them going in the back of a net, unfortunately. We need to sort that out. And as we approach the 70th minute, 
I think we need to go for it. So, I think we take Hughes away. He's been good, I've got to say, Hughes. I've been impressed with Hughes. But he's got to make way for Matt Cotton, who's going to come on the pitch instead in that attacking field position. I think we need it. We need to go into attacking as well. Come on, boys. Let's do this. We've got a throw in, actually, straight away. I don't know if the change has even been made yet, but Delan cuts inside, shoots, cleared, and it goes out for a corner. I think that might have just been the highlights for the, uh, the substitute taking place. But either way, promising signs. Corner comes in from the other side. Masters putting it in. Gray was completely free in the middle, but couldn't quite get there, unfortunately. The ball comes back into Bird. Back to Porter. Masters shoots from distance over the bar. We're getting so close now we just have to say let's say push forward i think for the next 10 minutes or so come on we really have to get a result here we're in such a good opportunity this could be a massive three points if we win it i think what we do is we make matt cotton a shadow striker on attack and we're going to bring connor robinson on for splat who actually played relatively well apparently according to his ratings but hasn't scored a goal robinson as a pressing forward on attack will do that come on this has to be it. We have to score a goal now. Robinson has to prove himself as well. He, he didn't score much towards the end of last season at all. Today has to be the day that he's going to do it again. We're going to say push forward once again. I don't think we'll have a chance to do another shout in the game. So this has got to be it. Come on, lads. We're going to go very attacking as well. We have to. 16 shots and we've not scored. That is really poor from us. We should have done better than this. And if Witten Albion score now, I will be so cross. So cross if they score now. I can feel it coming. That's the thing. I can really feel it coming. McFadden puts it in. Headed away. Brilliant. Now let's get on the counter-attack now. Holmes coming forward. Pace on the counter-attack as Holmes just runs forward through the middle. Into Matt Cotton. That looked like a certain goal. And that was a superb save from their goalkeeper. Bird's corner comes in. Porter can't quite get on it. Come on. This is really promising stuff. Really, really promising stuff. I, I don't know what else I can do right now to, to get us to score a goal. We're going to fall short in today's game. And this could have gone from... They've played with 10 men for so long as well. That's really annoying as well, how we've not managed to capitalise on that. Cross comes in, collected by the goalkeeper. This is going to be one of those games we may look back on at the end of the season. And we may look back on it thinking that's a, that's a good point that we've gained. But I'm... With the squad that we've got and where I think we should be this season in and around the playoffs, we may look at this and think that's two points dropped, unfortunately. Two, 19 shots of their one shot, 60% possession, eight on target. I don't know what else we could have done to score goals. Don't know what else we could have done to score goals, but we should have. It's a positive. It's a positive because if we did that performance last season, we'd be celebrating it like a win. If, that, if we had that performance last season, that would have been celebrated like a win. And this season, we're disappointed because we know that the players we've got this season are better. But if that is a sign of things to come, that kind of domination, those kind of shots that we, you know, the stats wise, if that's a sign of things to come this season, this could be a very exciting season for us. Oh, you know what I've done as well? I've just gone to see how long the recording is. And I've just seen that the, uh, the bloody green screen doesn't fit properly. So I, I, ap I apologise for that. Um, oh, that's a bit embarrassing. Sorry, lads. You're going to have a little bit of a weird bit. Should we just do it that? There we go. Just have that for the rest of the video now. I don't care. I've ruined it for the whole video now, so I'm going to ruin it for the rest of it for you. To be fair, I've got to say, two clean sheets so far this season and a win is pretty good going. I won't complain about that too much, especially when we compare it to last season, where the first three games were all losses. Wasn't great. We've got a tough few games coming up, though. We've got Buxton, Frickley, Altrincham, Gainsborough. And Pontefract, I've choked on the Gainsborough there, but Buxton did very well last season, as did Frickley, as did Altrincham. Gainsborough did all right in the end, and Pontefract actually dropped down quite a bit, but they should be up there. They're a decent side. I um, don't think I'm going to show you any of them games, though. I, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, they get it. It depends how we do in this. It depends how we do. I want to get through this season pretty quickly. I want to start progressing with the save. I feel like it's been a bit slow to get going and things like that. I want to get like, you know, quickly into the future, quickly going up the leagues and well, quickly going through seasons so we go up the leagues quicker. It may take us three or four seasons, but I want to get through those three or four seasons quickly so we have relatively quick progression in the series as a, as a whole. So these next five games actually are going to be real tests. If we do well in them, we'll do very well this season, I think. If we don't do well in them, it could be another season of relegation battle, unfortunately. Next episode, we're going to do 
Hyde United and Warrington, I think. That's probably going to be most sensible to do next episode. Right then, so welcome to Season 4 of the Lincoln Loco. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode. I know we signed a lot of players. I know it's a lot to remember. But from what you can remember, who do you like the look of the most? I think Joe Howell is going to be great. Javan Splat on paper should be good. But as we saw today relatively ineffective so i'm not quite sure how that's going to go for the rest of the season but we'll see thank you very much for watching today's episode if you've enjoyed it make sure you do put a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and i'll see you next time for some more lincoln loco action <laughs>